Welcome to Streams of Income with self-help author Ryan Rieger. For the next hour, you'll hear proven methods for how to live the multiple income streams dream. Ryan is passionate about helping others discover their gifts and start their own business. He's published five books, and his courses and group coaching programs have changed the lives of thousands of students all over the world. Ryan's books include Private Label, The Easy Way, Finding Your Grace Place, and his latest, Streams of Income. And now, here's your host, Ryan Rieger. Hey guys, welcome back to the Streams of Income radio show. I'm your host, Ryan Rieger, and boy, are you in for a treat. So today is a very special guest, my friend, my mentor, Terry Savelle Foy. If you haven't heard of her, you're going to love this episode. And if you have, you're going to love it even more. Uh, she just brings it today. And I, guys, I cannot say enough good things about her, her ministry, the things that she's doing. I have learned so much from her teachings. Uh, she is the cheerleader of dreams. And I have learned a lot about vision boards how to set goals, how to dream big, how to take the limits off of God. So I talk about on this podcast um, a decent amount that you've got to have a vision. You've got to have, you got to dream guys. You let yourself dream, per, give you, I give you permission to dream. And, and, and Terry does too. She gives us permission to dream again. Some of us have, as adults, have pushed down those dreams that are in our heart and are just, you think, you know, Hey, it's too late for me. I can, I can't do that. And so take the lid off of that, allow yourself to dream again. And one of the key ways to do that is through a vision board. And it doesn't have to be an actual physical board in your house, in your office. A lot of them, a lot of times they are Terry's is it's a, it's a board above her desk in her office. Mine actually is a virtual board. I use Trello and I have pictures, but put pictures in for that represent things that you truly desire, truly want. These could be things that you, they feel like God has called you to do things that God has called you to reach for belief for, or maybe it's just a desire and you're not even sure if it's a God thing or not put it on the board because if God put it in you, it's there for a reason. And he wants to get you to your dreams. And so I have just learned so much from Terry and I did, am so honored that she took the time to be on my podcast, to share her story. Cause you look at her now and you would never think that she uh, was where she was back in 2002, struggling on the verge of a divorce, just things were not going right for her until she made a change. And so the, she says the secret of her success is in her daily routine and we talked about uh, how she sets goals, how she makes a vision board, and how she dreams, guys. And the things that she's been able to accomplish are just so amazing. But we give credit to God for that because he's put in her these dreams and desires, caused her to um, give her her wisdom on how to move forward on those steps. And guys, some of these things that might be on your vision board might be things that you're like, I have no idea in the world how this is ever going to happen but I just feel like I need to put this on there. It just may be a desire for um, your dream home. Or maybe if you are in the position that Melina and I were several years ago when we didn't have kids and we desperately wanted to be parents, you know, I had, we put a baby on our vision board and now Callan is going to be five years old in April. And so believe big guys, take the limits off of God, allow those dreams that have been in your heart to come out, create a vision board, and actually, she has a vision board course showing you exactly how to do that. It's only eight bucks, guys. Go grab it. There'll be a link in the show notes below here where you can grab it for eight bucks to learn how to create your own vision board. And again, it doesn't have to be this big gaudy thing that you um, that you have on your wall somewhere, but it just needs to be somewhere that you can look at it every day and it just propels you forward. And Terry says that you become what you behold. And that is so true. What you look at every day is what you're going to become. And so I'm just so stoked about this episode. You're going to love it. Here is my friend, Terry. All right, Terry, welcome to Streams of Income Radio. Really appreciate you doing this. Oh, it's an honor. I'm ex you're speaking my language today. Yes. Vision we're talking boards. Talking about vision boards. So you posted this yesterday and uh, Melaine, when she um, found out that you were going to be on with me, she said, um, 
did you see what she posted yesterday on Instagram? I said, no, let me go look real quick. And so you posted that to tomorrow, meaning today you get to take a big dream come true off the vision board. And I know that's being on my podcast, right? <laughs> <laughs> I like that. Um, am I supposed to be honest? But yes, I'm honored to be I'm just, on here. <laughs> I'm kidding. I know. I know it wasn't to be on the Streams of Income podcast, but... <laughs> This is an honor. I have to say. <laughs> I know. It's an honor for me, too. Um, I, I, uh, right before, guys, we recorded, we had a friend of mine, uh, Diana Wallace, on who just has, uh, spoke Terry's praises and some of the content that just got her through a really rough patch in her life. But um, so it's, uh, I'm honored to be able to share you with my audience because not everybody knows who you are. So why don't we talk about your story and how you got to, obviously, you, you didn't wake up one day and now you're the a founder of a ministry. So what's the yeah. yeah. beginning of so, like a couple, like 2002, I think was a very critical point in your life, wasn't it? Yeah, that was my rock bottom. My wake up call was 2002. So yeah, Ryan, I just found myself in 2002. I was separated from my husband. We've been married for 11 years. We separated. We were this close to divorce. Mm. We, I was living paycheck to paycheck. I had no money in my savings account after working for 11 years. We just spent everything we earned. Mm -hmm. Um, I paid my car note every month, my credit cards every month. I had no vision for my mm -hmm. life. And I had a five-year-old little girl looking to me for a role model. Mm -hmm. And basically I just sort of looked into my future and realized unless I make a radical decision to change, this isn't mm -hmm. going to be just like a little season of regret. It's going to be a life of regret. Yeah. And I just started Basically, what I tell people is giving myself permission to dream, mm, Yes, which sounds so obvious, but I hadn't dreamed in so long. I didn't even know what I wanted, you mm. know, but, you know, a lot of times people say, well, Terry, where do you start? And I just happen to have a little vision board here. Yes. Actually, you can see my big one. In I the can. Room, probably. Yes. yes. But, you know, I tell people just start with a blank canvas. Yeah. Just start with a blank page. And that's what I did. You know, I started just imagining as far as I could, like, what can I imagine mm -hmm. if I really take the limits off of God and I don't think about how I could make this happen? What do I see myself doing? So, Ryan, basically, I just started dreaming, started going, mm -hmm. I wonder if I'll ever write books. I wasn't even sure if this was God sure. or just, sure. you know, it was just a yeah. wonder. Yeah. I wonder if I'll write books. I wonder if I'll ever be on television with my dad. My dad's a minister, you know, and I thought, I wonder if I'll ever help teenage girls who are pregnant before marriage because I got pregnant my senior year of college and I just wanted to die. I just wanted to run away. I was so ashamed of myself. And, you know, I went to Texas Tech and my last semester I got pregnant. I wrote in my journal, just laying in my floor in Lubbock, Texas. I said, I want to die. Mm. Oh my gosh. And I, I told my roommates, I said, I can't bear to tell my parents what I've done. I'll probably ruin my dad's ministry. I said, I'm just going to run away. I'm just going to head west, you and know? Yeah, you didn't ruin it. It's grown so, since then. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. Thank you, Lord. That's right. But I said, I'm just going to run away. I'm just going to head yeah. west. And Teresa said, no, you're not. You don't even know which way is west. She said, we're going to get through this. Which is true. But I just said, you know, I wonder if I'll ever help young women, you know, pregnant or going through tough times. But I just started dreaming. Mm. And here's what I discovered, Ryan. There is a principle in the word of God that you become what you behold. Yes. You become what you behold. Mm -hmm. So I started putting pictures. Like I went to a bookstore and I just posed in front of the bookshelves as if I had a book. Yeah. I hadn't even written a book. Mm -hmm. You know, I took pictures on a TV set, acting like I was going to be on television ministry. Um, I took a picture of the Dallas Cowboys cheerleaders and put it on my vision board. Mm -hmm. Here it is right here. Yep. I can show you that. So I put that on there. Of course, my husband said, you still want to be a Dallas Cowboys cheerleader? I said, no, Rodney, I want to minister to them. Yes. He said, well, I didn't know because sometimes they pick old ones, you know, but. <laughs> I don't think it's as funny as you do, but <laughs> my point is you become what you behold. Mm. Every single thing I just shared with you, it's already happened in my life. Yes. You know, here I am walking into a bookstore, seeing my books on the shelf. Here I am ministering on television. Mm. 
-hmm. Here I am speaking at conferences, you know, to thousands of people or whatever. Yeah. Now I minister to the Dallas Cowboys cheerleaders. You know, yeah. I go to their retreats. and But it started with just giving myself permission to dream. Mm. So you just start with a blank canvas. Start yeah. with a blank page. Um, you know, I might as well tell you this so I don't forget that God yeah. did heal my marriage. We just celebrated 30 years of I marriage. Know. Congratulations. <laughs> Thank you, That's Lord. Awesome. But, you know, if I could say this real quick, because a lot of times yeah. people say, okay, Terry, but I still don't understand. I don't know what to dream. Well, one of the ways I like to tell people to really get started is to just imagine it's December 31st of next year, not this year, next year. And you've got your party hat on. It's New Year's Eve. You're celebrating with your friends. Imagine turning to your friend and saying, this has been the most amazing year of my life. Now, what would need to happen for you to say yeah. that? Hmm. Whatever it is, write it down, right? <laughs> <laughs> With a Texas size pencil. That's right. But write it down. You know, yeah. if it's, oh my gosh, I lost 25 pounds. I now weigh my ideal body weight of whatever that is. Mm -hmm. Or I finished two more semesters of college. This was the greatest year. I got mm -hmm. my real estate license. I finished my manuscript. You know, whatever it is, write it down. Yes. So, you know, if you want me to tell a story real quick, I think go this for sort it. Of no, I, this is definitely. I mean, I'm here to listen. I'll, I'll, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll I have a couple of questions that I want to ask you, but uh, you, you can, you can preach. This is good stuff. <laughs> well, this is my language, you know, but it yeah. wasn't for so many years. Yeah. But, you know, I had a friend who had the honor of ministering to the actor Will Smith. Mm -hmm. And he said when he went to his house, he walked in and he saw this big glass wall with like 150 little index cards mm -hmm. all over the wall. Yeah. And he said, what is all this? And he said, that's my next movie I'm working on. He said, every good movie has ups and downs and good characters and bad characters. And my friend that was looking at this said, this looks so confusing. He said, how do you even know where to start? Mm. You know what Will Smith said? That's the easy part. He said, you always start with the final scene and mm -hmm. then you work towards it. Yes. Well, see, it's the same with your vision board. You decide how do you want next year to end? Mm -hmm. How do you want the next five years to end? And then you start working towards it. Yes. So that's the first point is you just yeah. start with a blank page and you have to write it down. Yeah. How do you decide with um, things that are like, God, this would be, um, and I think I know what your answer is, but God, this would be amazing. I have no idea how this is going to happen. It may not even be something that you feel like is something that he's called you to do. It's just kind of a, just a desire. Or yeah. is it okay to put things on there that are like, I have no clue if I'm going to hit this, if this is ever going to happen, but I'm just going to put this yeah. on here anyway. Yes, absolutely. And you know, the thing is like, you may have seen, well, I don't know if you can tell this one, but this picture right here is me in France in mm -hmm. a bookstore in Paris. But I put a picture of the Eiffel Tower on my vision board back then. Mm -hmm. And I said, Lord, I don't even know if this is you. I'm, yeah. My degree is in French. But I said, I'm just a girl from Texas speaking rusty French. I don't even know anyone in France, mm. but I trust you. Mm. But I really wasn't even sure. Is that God or is it just because everybody wants to go to Paris? You know, right, right. But I put it on the vision board anyway. And then God began ordering my steps. Yes. And of course, now, you know, we have a whole outreach in France and books and right. the bookstores and stuff. But I found out that there is a connection between your potential, your passion mm. and your purpose. Mm. So those desires that you have, they're not coincidental. Right. In fact, the Lord said that to me recently in prayer. He said, um, if it's in your heart, it's there for a reason. Mm. If it's in your heart, it's there for a reason. A lot of people don't have Paris in their heart or helping right. teenage girls, you know, but whatever God has put in your heart, don't disregard it because it looks so ridiculous. Right. Because every dream is impossible when you first get the dream. Yes. You know, yeah. the vision comes first, the provision comes second, right? Mm -hmm. yep. So you never have all the money you need when God gives you a dream. That's so. Right. The other thing I would say to you is there is a difference between dreams and goals. Mm -hmm. You know, dreams are like my vision board back there. It has big dreams up there that I have no clue how they're going to happen, when they're going to mm -hmm. happen. Some of them have been up there for five years. Mm -hmm. But goals are simply dreams with deadlines. 
Yeah. You assign a deadline to it, like pay off the MasterCard, $4,000, you know, and 12 cents, mm-hmm. whatever. Mm-hmm. Um, that's losing a certain amount of weight. That's finishing, you know, a real estate license or whatever. Those are goals that you would set over the next 12 months. This is what I want to accomplish. Yes. So that's the difference. You know, like when I announced that today I get to take a dream off the vision board, it's something that's been up there for three years. Yeah. And you probably had no, it wasn't, did you have, was something like that? Did you have a step-by-step thing that you were taking action on to get that to happen? Or was it more like, God, I feel like this is something I'd like to do. This may be from you, this may not, but this is a, I know that if it's in me, it's there for a reason. So I'm going to put this up here. And I don't even know what I need to do to make that happen. I'm just trusting you to bring it a pass. Let me know if there's some steps and things that I need to actually take action on. But other than that, it must be like, this is going to have to be you for this to come to pass. Right. You, I mean, exactly what you just said, other than maybe some spiritual things, like yes. the Bible says to call things that be not as though they are. Mm-hmm. So I speak to that vision board. Mm-hmm. Um, I sow seed for my dreams. A lot of people don't really understand that principle, but, you know, God said the whole earth revolves around the principle of seed time and harvest. Mm-hmm. So I learned years ago, if you have a need, sow a seed. Yes. If a farmer wants some corn, he doesn't just put it on a vision board and speak to it. He's got to sow seed for yeah. the corn. So what's that look like practically? Let's say that, um, go back to 2002 and you got Paris on there and you, let's say, you know, that's a dream from God. There's someday I'm going to be speaking in Paris, ministering to people in Paris. What would, um, and I know this is probably the answer is, you know, God's going to lead you and tell you what seed to sow and where, but um, some ideas, might it be like finding a ministry that's already serving there and invest in that ministry? Absolutely. In fact, that's exactly what happened with me. I went on a trip with my dad. He was Uh preaching. Yeah. And I was in my hotel room in France just going, Lord, why do I love this nation so much? Am I supposed Mm. to do something? Mm. Well, I had saved $500 to just buy souvenirs on that trip. Yeah. Because, you know, inside I was thinking, I don't know if I'll ever get to come back here again. So I saved $500. I wanted to buy as many little Eiffel Towers as I could find. (laughs) Right. But while I was on that trip, God just dropped that dream in my heart. So I thought, I got to sow a seed. If mm. you got a need, sow a seed. So mm. I took the whole $500 and sowed it into some pastors who were already making a difference. Yes. Well, within six months, I got an email, someone inviting me to come to Paris and speak there. Wow. It was just that seed just yeah. opened the door for God to do the impossible. Yeah, that's not a coincidence. No, not <laughs> at all. No. So, but let me just mention to the power of writing it down. Yeah. You know, um, you may have heard me share this, but there was a professor at Virginia Tech, Dr. David Cole, who did research on successful people and people who write their dreams and goals. Mm -hmm. And he said he just walked up to random people and just asked them one question. He said, what are your goals? Like, basically, what's your vision? And he said, 80% said, I don't know. I don't have any. So 80% of people are walking around like this with no yeah. vision. Mm. Now think about this, Ryan. God's word says without a vision, you perish. People perish, yeah. But 80% have no vision, no goals. He yeah. said 16% said, I have some goals, but I've never written them down. Yeah. He said 3% said, I've written them at some point, but I don't know where they are. Yeah. He said 1%. Said I have goals, I've written them down, and I review them on a consistent basis. Mm. He said, do you know who the 1% were? Millionaires. Yeah. Every one of them were millionaires. Mm-hmm. And Ryan, when I began to hear those things back in 2002, 2003, 2004, I started thinking, if millionaires can do this, if Jim Carrey, Katy Perry, Lady Gaga, Beyonce, they do this. Yeah. If they can do this and get results. How much more should I, as a believer, just take this principle from God's word? He said, write the vision, make it plain. Why can't I get results? And so it literally started with something that looked kind of foolish. And I never dreamed I would share this publicly because I wasn't doing any of this at the time. So I want to just mention this real quick, though, that there's such power in having pictures with your dreams. Yes. And the reason why is because your mind thinks in pictures. It doesn't Mm -hmm. think in words, you know? So when you add a picture, um, 
the business world, the success world calls it, you know, the law of attraction, or they'll talk about how your subconscious mind doesn't know anything different than, you know, if this is reality or if it's fake. Right. And so us as believers, your faith goes to work to mm. make that image happen. Yes. So um, an example for me, do you want me to, do you want me to share this or do you yeah, want to go for it? You can share anything <laughs> you want. So when I first started doing this, you know, the vision boards and actually putting pictures up there, God put a dream in my heart. I said, one day I believe I'm going to have a women's conference and it's going to be called icing. Mm -hmm. Well, that just alone sounded stupid. Like, <laughs> is this a cake tasting convention? Like, what is this? You know? Yeah. Yeah. And so I said, I don't know, but God dropped that in my heart. And mm -hmm. I just believe we're going to have this conference. And I said, but I want you now I was talking to my my coworkers, they didn't work for me. We were coworkers. Yeah, you're working for your I dad's said, ministry at the time. Exactly. Yeah. And so I said, um, I don't see 20 women in a little hotel ballroom. I said, I see thousands of women in a coliseum. Yeah. So I told one of my coworkers, I said, can you print a picture of me preaching to thousands of people? He said, well, Terry, there's only one problem. You've never preached to thousands <laughs> of people. <laughs> right. Yeah. So I said, well, can you make one? So, you know, you've probably seen this, Ryan, but he, uh -huh. he went to Joyce Meyer's website yep. and he printed this picture of Joyce Meyer, uh -huh. but he took little Joyce off the stage and he put little <laughs> Terry. Yes. Is this adorable? And That's it awesome. says, I've seen, you know, yes. And even on the jumbo screens, he chopped off her head and put my That's head. You awesome. Know. Have you shown that cool. to Joyce? I have not, but I'm going to, <laughs> I should. need to show her this, don't I? But I just laughed and I thought this was the funniest thing because it just looked ridiculous. Little Terry, little Joyce. But I said, would you print several copies? Because I want my team to know where we're yes. headed. Yes. Well, when I handed it to the team, of course, they all laughed and thought this was the funniest thing. But here's my point, Ryan. This vision, you see my vision board? My mm -hmm. desk faces my vision board. Yes. So every day I'm looking at this picture. Mm -hmm. Well, after you look at it every day, I'm not just cracking up anymore. Right. And then a few more months go by. It actually kind of looks like a real picture. And then a few more months go by and you forget that it's a fake picture. Yeah. Well, remember what I said at the beginning that you become what you behold. Mm -hmm. Whatever you keep before your eyes, it will eventually show up in your life. Yeah. So here's a fake picture. Here's a real picture mm -hmm. of me for Jim. Wow. I'm it just looks like you got a bigger you. crowd too. I, that crowd, I think it is a bigger one, isn't it? <laughs> Look out, Joyce. No, That's right. No, but, you know, I began, when I began just doing that and going, oh, my gosh, like this works. Yeah. Because it's not new age. It's not the law of attraction. It's God's word. Yes. Yeah. Proverbs 23, 7 says, as a man thinks in his heart, so mm -hmm. shall he become. Yes. What you think about, you bring about. That's right. So I want to challenge every single person listening, everyone watching, give yourself permission to dream. Mm -hmm. Just take God at his word. Get a vision. Take the time to write it down. Don't leave it in your head. Don't say, I got my dreams right here. Mm -hmm. No, get your dreams right here. <laughs> Ow, yes. I get my head. <laughs> that's, a, that's all right. Get your dreams on a vision board. And speak to these dreams. Mm. Call those things that be not as though they are. Mm -hmm. I'm just living proof that God will choose the least likely person. I know I sound like Minnie Mouse, but God will choose the least likely person if you just have faith to believe. That's right. That's so good. And then I don't know if I heard this from you or somebody else, but um, vision boards are in the Bible in Genesis, essentially not the actual like cork board, but yeah. and God told Abraham to look up in the sky and see the stars yes. and look down at the sand and see the, those are the number of your descendants. This yeah. was before he had any kids. So every single time that he was probably down and like, God, you said this years ago, where is this? He could look up and see, okay, you told me, you promised me. I see the stars. I look down, I see the sand. Yes. And that eventually turned into the nation of Israel. Yes, that's exactly right. He was surrounding him with vision. Yes. Because he knew that we move towards what we consistently yeah. see. Exactly. So it's the same with us, you know, that in fact, even in, in goal setting, just in business classes and things, mm -hmm. they'll teach you the power of keeping this before your eyes because 
they say, um, keep your goals out of reach, but never out of sight. Yes. That out of sight is the number one reason that they go unachieved. Mm -hmm. And that used to be me, Ryan, for so many years. You know, I would get out a notebook on January 1st and I would, you know, sit there and I would write, okay, this year I'm going to lose weight, save money, get closer to God, get organized, read more. And those were my New Year's goals. And I had no idea I was setting myself up to fail mm -hmm. because vague goals produce vague results. Right. You say you're going to save money. What does that mean? Here's 20 bucks. And I guess you saved money. Mm -hmm. No, I had to learn that I've got to be crystal clear. I'm going to save $1,200 by December 31st. Yeah. That's a hundred dollars a month. I can do that. Yes. Or I'm going to read six books by June 1st. That's a book a month. I can do that. Mm -hmm. Let me ask you, so, you know, in your ministry, yeah. like, because I've, you know, I've been around um, quite a bit over the last several months now, helping you guys out with some various things and hearing some of the goals that you have. And one of them is to get the, like, the vision board course into a thousand, like 50,000 or 40,000 hands. Um, yeah. How do you like, I'm asking this for real, like for me, because um, how do you know what kind of a goal to set like that? I know some of it might come from you praying and the Lord drops a number in your heart, but like with YouTube subscribers or email subscribers, you've had some pretty big goals. Like I want to have this many subscribers on YouTube. Does that number, does that come from prayer or is that like thinking, well, we've got this, we've had this many over the last two years and that's X number of a month. So let's double that. And that becomes a number. I feel like sometimes I'm just pulling numbers out of thin air without like knowing if, if that really is, should be the goal or not. Right. It's a little bit of both. Some of it is a calculated goal, you know, uh -huh. where we have looked at, okay, if we were able to get 10,000 in this area, mm -hmm. then what if we did this? Or mm -hmm. if we're running Facebook ads and we saw this many books sell, then could we do, you know, so yeah. some of it is calculated. Okay. And then there's other times when we may get that calculated number that's had a lot of thought. And uh -huh. then I'll say, y'all, I just feel like we're supposed to go higher mm. just from praying about it, you know, yes. or even financially, there's times where it looks like because we've grown this much every year, then we should aim to reach this next year. Mm -hmm. And sometimes I'll just feel like, y'all, I just feel like we really got to believe God to go bigger. Yes. Mm. You know, and that comes from prayer. Yeah. Um, but also, I, I do think it's both. Mm -hmm. Because, you know, if you're a $1 million organization, I wouldn't personally say next year's 50 million. <laughs> you know, right. I mean, right. I just, I don't, I don't go quite that big right? with some of my dreams that I'm, you yeah. know, I like to just say, Lord, it's in your hands. You can exceed our expectations, but this is what mm -hmm. we're believing for. Yes. You know? Yeah. That's so, good. And so like, if you go, if you set a goal for 50,000 new YouTube subscribers and you're at 10, you feel like that's doable, but you only hit 35. You're probably still saying, well, that's 25,000 more than we, it's not like a necessarily a failure, right? Right. In fact, I learned a few years ago, we always set milestone goals mm. because um, milestones, they, they help you not feel defeated or just like, dear Lord, are we ever going to get there? Mm. So a milestone goal, we always set three of them. Like if the goal was 10,000 new subscribers on YouTube. Mm -hmm. Then we would say, when we hit 3,000, we're going to celebrate. Mm -hmm. When we reach 5,000, we're going to celebrate. When we reach 7,500, we're going to throw a party. And then if we reach 10,000, awesome, we did the goal. Yes. But That's we're going to celebrate all the way because it just builds your faith and it builds yeah. that momentum that you're going the right way. Keep going. Don't give up. You know. Yeah. So I do that with everything, with our savings goals, everything. Mm. You know, our sales goals, we do that with everything. Even with new partners joining the ministry, my team has milestone goals and we celebrate when we reach one. That's awesome. So, wow. I want to be respectful of your time. I'm looking at the clock here too. So how, I'm doing good. Yeah, tell me the vision board course. Tell me about that and how um, I'll post the link. I'll put a link in the show notes so we don't need to mess with that. But just tell me about the vision board course and why somebody should take advantage of that and how that's going to help them you know, okay. Yeah. Reach their dream. Well, yeah. So we briefly talked about it today, but I launched an online vision board course and it's six training videos where I teach you everything because the most common thing I hear from people is I don't know what to dream. I don't know if I'm doing it right. Um, I don't know how to set goals. What do I do after the vision board's ready? Do I just put it on the wall? You know, what do I do while I'm waiting? 
everything from who should see my vision board. That's a big one. Yes. Because you cannot share big dreams with small minds. Yes. So I turned it into an online course with six training videos. Um, and then also, Ryan, what comes with it is my book, Dream It, Pin It, Live It. This is a full book on how to make a vision board with the workbook. So what we did is we put this in the ebook format. So you get the online course mm -hmm. plus these products here in ebooks. Um, it was $97. And we've had this for a few years and we were selling these courses, $97. Mm -hmm. And last, no, this year, I just had it on my heart because you were asking, how do you come up with numbers or whatever? This was totally in prayer. Yeah. The Lord put it on my heart to take the vision board course and reduce it to $8. Now, when I came to the office and I told my team, I thought they would freak out and be like, what yeah. are you talking about? But they said, let's do it. But yeah. then they said, why eight dollars though? And I said, well, the number eight, it means new beginnings. Yes. And I just believe every person who will just take God at his word and say, Lord, I don't care what's happened in the past. It's behind me. I'm ready for a new beginning yes. and just start dreaming. So that's why we do it for $8. That really is the reason it's yeah. a new beginning. That's so awesome. we're offering the online vision board course to all of your listeners and watchers um, for $8. You get the books and the six online training videos. And you, can you explain about this new program, the affiliate that we're starting yeah. today? Yeah. Is so today? we're kicking off an affiliate program because obviously um, there's other people that need to hear about what you're doing. And <clears throat> it's what I do in my business, Terry. It's like, I, I have a certain amount of people that I'm always trying to get new ones into my audience because there's more people I want to serve, but yes. other people have their own audiences that might need or want, or could benefit from what I'm teaching. It's the same thing yes. here. So my audience, my listeners, some of them have heard of you and some haven't. And so yes. partnering up to create an opportunity for, um, you know, you, my audience to get your yes. products and uh, I'm able to get a little bit of a commission for doing that as a, as a, just kind of a thank you, I guess. And we'll, uh, this will be kind of a model for how there's other people out there that you need to get in front of that have way bigger audiences than me that I think uh, we're testing this out on to see um, if this can work. Um, I know it can, because it's what we do in business every, you know, in my business all the time, yeah. the joint venture partnerships. Yeah. Well, I'm so grateful that you're doing this with us and all of the wisdom that you've imparted yeah. into us. I just want you to know I don't take that lightly. You have been such a blessing to this thank ministry. You. I, you're I so smart. Lot. Oh, thank <laughs> you. I, I know it's a um, it's a God thing. I really think he's given me the the wisdom to build my business. And I knew several years ago, he told me that I'm going to use what I know about internet marketing membership communities, all this stuff to help spread the gospel yeah. and, you know, being able to partner with you and what I did, you know, helping your dad just a few years ago. Um, just, you know, I, I just, I'm honored, you know, and so it's, it's fun. Thank Love it. you. Thank you so um, much. Uh, so I'm excited about being able to offer this and for anyone who wants to learn more about getting crystal clear on their vision and, yes. and setting goals for the new year. So absolutely. How else? Um, so I know there's other, this is kind of just the stepping stone. You have so much more content out there. So many more books. Um, yeah. One, I really like a lot. I mean, I like all of them, but the five things successful people do before 8 a.m. Because you talk yes. about this, the, your, this, your success, your future success is hidden in your daily routine. And it is, it yes. really is. There's things that you do day to day you know, little by little that add up to those bigger goals. Um, but how else, how do you want people to reach you? Just go to terry.com. Yeah. Terry.com is the easiest way. Go to the store and check them all out. And you know, Ryan, it's interesting. You brought up that book, the five yeah. things successful people do before 8am. Because when you asked me at the beginning of the podcast, um, about my story mm -hmm. and how things change, you know, from me and my husband being separated and being in debt and all that stuff, it was doing those five things every day. And one of the five was writing my dreams and goals. Yes. But it was those habits yes. that changed my whole life. Mm. So one of the five is the vision board and the dreams and goals. But, but it was those five habits. And I'm sure they're probably wondering, so we might as well tell them, right? Go for it. But it's pretty simple. It's number one is to just pray and meditate every day, listen for God's voice. Mm -hmm. The second one was to make myself read because I hated to read books, mm -hmm. but I would just set the timer for 20 minutes and make myself read. Mm -hmm. The third was to listen to teaching like what you're sharing today. 
just make myself while I'm getting ready, while I'm gluing my eyelashes on, you know, <laughs> just yes. listen to a podcast. The fourth was to write my dreams and goals. And the fifth was exercise. Mm -hmm. And that's when I heard John Maxwell say, the secret of your future is hidden in your daily routine. Yes. If you'll change your routine, you'll change your whole life. Mm -hmm. And that's exactly what happened. Yes. So That's awesome. Yeah. Thank you for doing this. Appreciate it. Oh my it. goodness, it was an honor. Yes, I had so much fun. We'll have you back on. You've been listening to Streams of Income with self-help author Ryan Rieger. From right here in the Dallas Metroplex, Ryan teaches several entrepreneurial courses and group coaching programs to students all over the world. Be sure to listen next week at the same time for Streams of Income with Ryan Rieger.